Hey guys, welcome back to CPO Wellness. Today's video is all about faking orgasms. So if you've been faking your orgasms your entire life or you're faking a lot of orgasms and you're kind of like sick of it, you want to stop, you want to be able to communicate what you want and you want to experience pleasure and real orgasms and you're wondering now what, especially if you're with a partner who you've been faking it with for a long time and you feel like you might have been lying to them or you don't know how to broach that conversation, this video is for you, so I hope you guys find it helpful uh, and we'll get started. Faking orgasms, I think, is a common thing. Majority of the women in my life have faked an orgasm once in their life at least. Um, if you haven't faked an orgasm, honestly, kudos to you. You're doing great. Keep being honest. Keep going out there and expecting pleasure and orgasms and don't fake it. Um, but if you have been faking orgasms, I can completely understand the need to feel like you have to do that and also the struggle of kind of like that downward spiral after you start doing it, especially with a long-term partner. So I'm going to speak a little bit from experience today and then I'm also just going to share some general tips and advice I have for people who are faking orgasms who don't want to do it anymore. So at the top, first of all, faking an orgasm is super common and the reason I think it's so common is because we are portrayed this image in society um, and this almost like story and this basically unrealistic expectation of women to have orgasms via penetration. So growing up, if you were watching movies and you just saw how easy it was for women to have sex and enjoy themselves and have orgasms, uh, and then the first time you have sex, you're not having that same type of pleasure and your body isn't responding in the way that you've been seeing in film and TV and media, it's really easy to be like, oh, something's wrong with me and I'm just gonna play this part and I'm gonna act like I'm normal, like all of these other people and examples that I've seen in media and pretend along with it and fake an orgasm so that I can create this story that matches more what I'm seeing, right? So for me personally, I always thought I was broken growing up. Um, I couldn't have an orgasm by a penetration and so that's why I was faking orgasms because I wanted to create the same narrative and the same story and have that same experience that I had seen growing up on TV but I wasn't actually having. And in doing so, Yes, maybe in that moment um, it was nice because it looked like I was creating the same experience, but it didn't actually feel like that. And instead I felt really lonely, I felt like I was broken, I felt like something was wrong with me, I didn't know who to talk to, um, and I was also getting incredibly frustrated because my partner was experiencing pleasure, which was not their fault, right? They didn't know that I wasn't, but I constantly wasn't. And so there becomes this pleasure gap, right? And then frustration and distance and sexual desire then starts to drop, but you're not communicating to your partner why it's dropping. And so they get frustrated and it just creates this big mess. So I always say communication is lubrication and being honest and upfront is what's gonna actually help spark more sexual desire and it's gonna help you get closer to pleasure and orgasm and your partner understand you more. But if you have been faking your orgasms, you're definitely not alone and it's totally okay that you've been doing it. We're gonna help you have actual orgasms and stop faking it. Don't worry. So if you're someone who um, has just been with previous partners and faking orgasms and now you're single, what I would say in your next relationship is just don't fake it, right? Start from scratch. And what I usually say too when I'm with a new partner and we have sex and I don't have an orgasm, I will usually say to them after like, oh, I don't usually orgasm through penetration. I actually need a lot of external clit stimulation. So could we try this or could we use a vibrator to put that on my clit where we're having sex? Or could you use your hand or I'm going to use my hand? You know, I show them when we're having sex where I need to be touched in order to have an orgasm. I explain that oral sex is something that gets me off a lot more often than penetrative sex. So having that conversation, if the person you're with respects you, cares about you, likes you, wants to be with you, and is not an asshole or is selfish, they will 100% support you and want to learn about your body and want to help you experience pleasure, right? They don't want you to be faking it either. They want you to have a good time. So if you get any backlash from just simply saying, oh, this is what I need or this is what I like, I would check the person who you're with because that doesn't seem like the type of person that I would want to be with or that you deserve. Um, you deserve someone who cares about your pleasure just as much as you care about theirs. So if you get any backlash from those conversations, that would be a huge red flag to me and I would start to evaluate if that's a person who you want to be sexual with. So that was a little bit easier and then obviously we have the case where if you're still with your partner who you've been faking orgasms with for a long time, how do we communicate to that person now that you have been faking it and not being super truthful with them? 
Again, I want to say I have been there. I understand how scary it may seem. I understand that you might feel really, you know, vulnerable or ashamed or embarrassed about this or you don't know even how to broach the conversation. I have been there. I know how you feel. It is not an easy conversation to have, but it is one that again is so necessary in order to kind of keep that relationship honest and pure and keep both of you guys sexually satisfied. So part of this is just being super brave. How I would go about having that conversation is A, picking a time where you know, you're know you not in the bedroom, you're not in a stressful situation, maybe on a walk or a drive, and just say to them, hey, I have something that's kind of been weighing on my mind a lot recently and I wanna be honest with you. During our sexual experiences, especially when we're having penetrative sex or when you're doing this, I have actually been faking my orgasms. And the reason why I've been faking it is because I always felt like something, you know, was off with me or I just felt like that's what I was supposed to be doing. But I've come to realize like, that's not okay and I also want to experience pleasure and I want to be honest with you and show you and help you understand how it, I experience pleasure and I haven't been doing that and so I just want to kind of start from scratch or you know this is how I've been feeling um, and again not making it about that person honestly if their ego gets bruised by this again another indicator that you might want to assess that relationship this is just about you experiencing pleasure and knowing that your body is perfectly fine the way it is you're not broken like you are your own unique person and it just is going to take time for you guys to figure out what's going to make you experience pleasure just like your partner and you can say like i feel bad that i I wasn't being honest with you, but now I'm ready to kind of be more vulnerable and express this to you. And I'm really excited to kind of see where this goes with our sex life and make it an exciting thing. Like, and be a cool kind of fun game for you guys to re-explore each other sexually. Um, and your partner's going to appreciate that, right? They're, they want you to feel pleasure. They want you to want to have sex with them and, and to be sexual with them. So being open and honest about it, um, you know, talking about maybe bringing in toys to the bedroom, right? Sex toys, vibrators, incorporating more oral sex in your relationship, right? Your partner should be excited about your pleasure just as you are excited about theirs. And they should react well to this. So it might feel uncomfy at first. I totally understand that. But I think that the more um, honest and open we are in relationships, the better it is for both parties involved. So yeah, I hope you guys found this video helpful. I hope you kind of drop any shame around if you're not having orgasms. And I hope you stop faking them because you are so, so, so worthy of great sex and great orgasms and great pleasure. And you deserve it. So you have to advocate for yourself, right? Nobody going to know what's going on in your body or your head unless you tell them so communicating this is super important communication is lubrication and i truly believe if we're just more honest and open and vulnerable we're going to have better experiences and our relationships are going to benefit from it so i hope you guys enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe also give us a follow at cvo wellness if any questions if you want to talk about something just dm me i'm always happy to answer questions i know these are kind of like scary vulnerable topics and i want to be a person who you guys feel comfortable to reach out to so please reach out uh and yeah i hope you guys are having a great rest of your day and i will see you for another video shortly